Hello everyone. The first lecture uh, is on synchronizing information technology and corporate strategy. So let's take a look at this and dive deeper into this chapter. Um, as we talked about earlier, you have four components of information technology strategy. The first one is synchronizing and that's what we're going to focus on in this lecture. So we're going to discuss some terms or jargon which we are going to use throughout this chapter and some of them we're going to use throughout the book. Um, and let's start with the first uh, term which is trifecta. These are three information technology based drivers, so digitization, software infusion and ubiquity which is disrupting the competitive landscape and we'll talk about what each one of them is um, in a minute. I will keep using the word red queen race which is essentially uh, that the IT the cascading investments in information technology which is triggered by one firm starting to spend IT investments and to match it your rivals keep uh, putting in more money and this creates a vicious cycle of ever increasing IT investments. Strategic aspirations uh, comes from your strategic plan. It's a combination of who your firm aspires to target and how. Um, operational strategy is a tactical implementation of your firm's business strategy. IT strategy is a set of choices that define how your firm will use IT to outperform its rivals. And of course, you must understand that your IT strategy must synchronize with your strategic aspirations. They cannot be uh, not synchronized and that's what we're going to talk about in this chapter. So the first trifecta we talked about uh, was software infusion, which is basically baking software into a product, service, or business activity. Uh, more and more items have software in it, and this is getting more pervasive. We are going to talk about digitization, and we're going to analyze the shift from physical to digital uh, using the digitization cube. And the shift can happen in a product or service, or how it's purchased, or how it's delivered. And we'll talk about each one. And of course, ubiquity is the cheap proliferation of cheap internet connectivity everywhere. We're going to use the word competitive advantage to talk about delivering more value than your rivals to customers. We'll talk about creating competitive advantage, which is widening the gap between your costs and what customers pay, and sustaining it is to keep it that way. Now, creating the advantage happens a lot, but very often because of the Red Queen race, other firms copy and so sustaining it is 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 going to be a difficult uh, proposition your IT portfolio is the term used to describe a collection of IT applications or apps as we say infrastructure and data assets we're going to talk about the four big waves of corporate IT since the 1970s and each of them have a different thrust and we're going to call them IT epochs and finally we use the term IT apps or applications, uh, which is a business software program used to perform a business activity. These can be operational or strategic. They can be purchased or custom built. So let's start this lecture by thinking of competition as a red queen race. In the book, Through the Looking Glass, Lewis Carroll writes about the red queen when Alice asks her why she's running so fast the Red Queen tells Alice it takes all the running to keep in the same place to get somewhere you must run twice as fast now let's use running as an analogy for IT investments and what we see is that investing the same as your competitors doesn't really get you ahead it keeps you from dropping out of the race and this is a problem because um, there, as you saw in the introduction, IT investments are ballooning with um, not much uh, return on investments from project success point of view. So if we're going to talk about the Red Queen race, 
it's essentially we introduce IT innovation and your rivals copy it. So let's remember before the 2000s, um, all computers, personal computers, were bought uh, in stores like Best Buy and Walmart. And then Dell came in and started selling computers online. Uh, cut the retailer out, was extremely successful. Uh, became a huge multi-billion dollar company. And then its rivals copied it. And now everybody sells computers online. It's no longer a competitive advantage for Dell. And the problem in this Red Queen race is that if you slip once, have a major setback. Uh, example is Vodafone in Canada uh, did not migrate all the customer accounts to its in its CRM system, and that results in uh, resulted in a 4.6 million pound fine. Um, if you slow down in your IT investments, um, you could make a strategic error. Uh, Blockbuster ignored Netflix and fell behind and could never recover and filed bankruptcy in 2010. Um, you, the tit for tat cycle keeps raising the stakes and you need to figure out how your firm can break out of this vicious cycle. Um, you don't have to be a hamster on the on a on a wheel running at the and staying in the same spot. So how do we make information technology strategic, strategically forceful without breaking the bank? So let's start with the premise that IT does not matter. There was a Harvard Business Review article pro provocatively titled, IT does not matter argue that IT has become so pervasive that its strategic importance has diminished. Even though firms spent $4 trillion on IT in 2016, scarcity, not pervasiveness, makes any asset valuable. IT is so pervasive that it's easy to replicate because it's a commodity that any firm can buy with the same IT supplier. It drew parallels to railroads, telegraph, electricity to urge firms to spend less, to follow rather than lead, and to manage risks rather than obsess over opportunities. The article was rarely read but widely bandied about in corporate boardrooms. Would you agree? Let us do a little thought exercise. Now replace the word IT with, let's say, electricity. Electricity cannot be a competitive advantage because everyone has it. Spend less and manage risks. Do not try to be a hero. Now replace IT with post-it notes. Boil to its essence, if everyone has X, X will never provide a competitive advantage. Replace X with any commodity. The logic is incontestable. It is bulletproof and the result is we conclude that IT does not matter. If you read this article, uh, if you want to read this article, please click this link uh, and it's available at Harvard Business Review. So if IT does not matter, why do we have an IT strategy class? Why are we in this class? So let's go back and take a look at this argument. This argument is the correct argument, but it has the wrong premise. And the false premise is incorrect, which means you're setting the context all wrong. The IT equals commodity premise is based on a common misunderstanding of what corporate IT is. IT is the costliest yet least understood corporate asset. Before declaring something a commodity, we must know what that something is. The computers, iPads, Microsoft Office, Apple Pay-like systems, internet connections that Mr. Carr is thinking are a fraction of corporate IT. Such things are indeed commodities. 
like commodities, 100% of their strategic value comes from how they are being used together with your firm's asset rather than just them in isolation. The same IT system can deliver completely different results in two different firms. Given the same hammer, you might create a masterpiece and I might hurt my hand. Like a calculator, a hacksaw, a steam engine, and a factory, IT is just a tool. How it is used matters. The firm that uses it best wins. Insight into using IT to rethink what is possible comes from deep business knowledge and not technical knowledge. Commodity IT infrastructure plays only a support role. Cutting off innovative IT investments cuts down risk but deprives the firm of future opportunities and eventual survival. IT equals commodity theory is a self-defeating mindset that misses the point of IT strategy. So your IT portfolio is a collection of three classes of IT assets. We have IT infrastructure, IT applications, and data. So your IT apps can be split into operational or strategic, and your infrastructure can be split into digital plumbing, data management, and IT support. And finally, there is data. So if we use a metaphor of IT portfolio as a pizza, the infrastructure is your crust and the applications are the toppings. So applications are the ones which actually cause differentiation, whereas infrastructure uh, does not cause differentiation, just must be good enough. Separating them allows you to be strategic in investing in IT. So let's look at IT infrastructure. If this is the firm-wide technology foundation, the pizza crust, shared by various applications that light functions use. It is the substrate that knits them together, and IT infrastructure serves the entire firm and is not e unique to individual line functions. IT infrastructure includes a firm's digital plumbing that moves data, example, network connectivity, stores data, and IT firm support, IT operations, maintenance, and support. Hardware and networks are the most visible part of IT infrastructure or commodities that your rivals can also buy. Hardware is anything that you can kick or touch, laptops, smartphones, cash registers, scanners, servers. And although hardware is the most visible part of IT, it is a minuscule percentage of corporate IT budgets, 10%. IT infrastructure demands deep technical skills and a holistic understanding of firm-wide as IT assets, but not a deep knowledge of line functions work. IT infrastructure must be economical because it rarely, uh, it's rarely gives competitive advantage and it does not differentiate a firm. It has to be reliable because the applications cannot function without it. So in the article by Carr that IT does not matter, he really focuses on this commodity IT, which is IT infrastructure, which is only a fraction of corporate IT. So idea here is be frugal with it and good enough suffices here. IT apps are software programs that individuals in a firm's various line functions use for their enterprise activities. Uh, this is kind of short for enterprise grade software application programs that can be purchased or developed by a firm. So purchased SAP would be an IT app, right? And if you have custom built point of sales or custom built software, that would be um, an IT app which is custom built. Now, apps consume only 20% of corporate IT budget, but really this is where the strategic value comes in, the competitive differentiation. They need to be uniquely tailored to individual line functions, 
and need to know how a line functions, business processes and activities. The only way to ensure that there is business know-how depends upon is direct in involvement of non-IT managers. Hiring business savvy IT staff will not make up for its absence. This really requires experienced line managers to be heavily involved in building these applications. So now we're going to look at two kinds of apps. We have operational and strategic, but let's look at operational. Operational apps support core business processes or transactions and can cross cut line functions. They are used to automate repetitive transactional processes and operational apps must be performed efficiently and reliably just to remain in business. They can be inward facing, for example, inventory, warehousing, point of sale, payroll, etc., or outward facing that customers use mobile tools, websites, internet connected activities. So operational apps are the foundation for executing your firm's core business processes. Um, they are competitive necessity necessities, and if you mess them up, they can be a huge liability. A typical enterprise resource planning system can cost um, millions of dollars. So operational apps uh, are often commodities, but they can be expensive. Strategic apps, a strategic app is something that creates a competitive advantage by doing something valuable that your rivals cannot. They introduce new ways for outsiders to interact with your firm, expand into new lines of business, exploit proprietary data in ways to help your firm, customers and business partners make better decisions. Most of the data that strategic apps use comes from operational apps. Once and if your rivals replicate a strategic app, it eventually becomes an operational app, a competitive necessity rather than a differentiator in your industry. A big part of IT strategy is about making your value producing IT apps harder to copy. So let's go back with pizza analogy and you have the IT infrastructure and IT apps. Uh, IT infrastructure is the crust, this is the topping. Uh, infrastructure is the foundation shared by all apps. IT apps are the programs used by line functions. Infrastructure can be cheap and reliable. IT apps actually enable fun line functions to work. The know-how of our infrastructure is technical for IT apps is business know-how. Strategic role, IT infrastructure is a competitive necessity. IT apps is a potential advantage. The third component of a firm's IT portfolio is data. Data is the most valuable asset at the heart of a modern firm. Fundamentally, IT is all about collecting, organizing, and distributing data. Infrastructure is the conduit which data flows through. Uh, it allows the apps to then scrub it and then organize it and categorize it to deliver it to people as business insight. So infrastructure and apps is what takes data, converts them into what we call information, and then uh, information becomes business insight or business intelligence. Data is collected by transaction processing systems or enterprise systems. These are point of sale, uh, could be your point of sale machines, cash registers, self checkout count counters. Um, if you go to bank online, and you're withdrawing cash, that's a transaction processing system. Your ATM, which records every transaction, is a transaction processing system. The proliferation of data being generated not just by humans, but also by machines and transactional systems of all stri uh, stripes has exponentially exploded the opportunities to strategically exploit data. Of all data, proprietary data that you collect yourself is the most potent for con constructing competitive barriers for your rivals. There is no shortcut or easy substitute for it. 
So this is what creates barriers to entry. Your proprietary data, uh, data and your proprietary apps as a combination will create competitive advantage and also sustain the competitive advantage for your company.